Hi there. Been a while since I made a video, and really there's nothing really to video about, but every now and again I stumble upon something that uh, might be of use to someone, and I found a unique solution to an issue that I uh, uh, ran into working on my bear hawk. One thing that was really, uh, what I found really satisfying about this whole build process, although it's taken years, is just the problem solving uh, aspect of it, just being able to find some different solutions to some really unique situations. And here's one of them. Put my glasses on. If you look at it, I've got some struts here, strut material, and those are the lift struts for the wings. And the past Paul wrote to the future Paul, which is now, and I put on tape is to remove the nuts, deburr all holes, install AN4-23A bolts, maybe within stop nuts per Bob Barrows, and this is the right strut, and this is the end that I took out that used to have some bolts and everything in here. And of course, if you go over to the left strut, the future Paul, or the past Paul, think of the future Paul, if I start on this strut first, it says see instructions on right strut. So I didn't mess anything up. So to deburr the holes, it turned out to be a little bit of a challenge. So I'm going to go ahead and show you what the issue was and then go ahead and show you the solution that I came up with. Okay, so here's the issue. Go in here and deburring holes. Seems easy enough. I've got some holes on each end of the struts, inside and out. And for the outside holes, I've got a hand reamer, which is pretty much for deburring tools. And I got this at a hardware store. A couple twists and the holes are deburred. What are we going to do for the inside? I can't get in there with that deburring tool to deburr those holes on the inside. So I'm thinking, okay, well, what have I got to do that? On, in the sheet metal world, you can get one of these things. It's called a Cogsdale reamer. See if it focuses here. You can see there's a little blade here. The blade retracts into the mandrel or into the, the shaft. So when it goes into a hole, as the, it's spinning in a drill motor, it deburrs on the way in, and then you pass the blade through, which retracts into the shank, and then you pull it up till it stops, run it a little bit, deburrs the inside, and pull it out. Super handy tool. The problem is, is this is an eighth, and those are quarter inch holes. They do make these in quarter inch uh, shank, uh, however, uh, there are about 35 bucks that I found on eBay, and that's a lot of money, plus the shipping and plus the time waiting for it to come in. So I thought, okay, well, what else can I do? So I have a uh, 90 degree drill motor, an air drill, and I have these uh, countersink bits that I've got. I've got a whole bunch of different ones for different rivet sizes in here. I thought, well, I'll just use one of these. So I went ahead and put it in there, but you can see it's just way too long, even though it really is pretty compact. So the next thing I could do, I thought, well, I've got a mandrel. Maybe I can take this, this mandrel that takes these threaded bits and use that. And I'll take that, put the threaded bit in, but you can see this part here is a little too big. So what to do? I thought, well, I can take one of these bits. If I could only get one of these in here and turn it, I can do that with my fingers, but I can't put enough down pressure really on it to, to do any good for any deburring. So I thought, well, how can I drive this thing? So I came up with this, and this is my, this is my solution for the problem. I've got a, uh, a countersink bit, and you can see I put a stop nut on it. If I could only join the two with a bolt, and I thought, okay, this is great. It's got the quarter by 24, I believe, threads on it. So I, uh, I put the stop nut on, I put it on backwards. The reason I put it on backwards is so the nylon locking portion would be on this bit and would help keep the bolt that I'm going to use to turn it from locking. So I'm going to go ahead and put the camera on a tripod and show you exactly how this works. Okay, I hope you can see this okay. 
I've got this bit, I went ahead, like I said, I inverted the nut, put it on there, and I just slide it in there, got plenty of room. I'm taking a quarter inch bolt, AN4, this is an AN426, and I put it down through the hole, and I can just engage the first couple threads there of that nut that's sticking up out of there, and I can go ahead and turn it. Uh, it doesn't, I can't really put a whole lot of pressure on it. I can, but then I thought, well, why don't I just go ahead and use a drill motor to turn the thing? So I did. So I've got this drill, I got the bolt. It's in there tight. I can go ahead and put this on here. Spin it a little bit while I'm holding it. And then you can see it. Just give it a buzz. Reverse the drill, hang on to the bit. And that's it. It's all deburred. Super simple. One other thing that's really kind of a nice thing to do, or a nice thing to have, is I've got this whole pointy little Phillips, a little tiny one, and it fits into this hole into this countersink bit, which you use to loosen and tighten it into the normal pneumatic drill motor. So I can use that for as a guide as I go back in there. There's one way back there, the fourth bit, fourth hole, and I can go ahead and hold on to that. Put in the bolt, you know, line it up as best I can here. Slowly spin it, take the screwdriver out, give it a buzz. Now, that's one thing. Normally I wasn't able to hold, hold on to this, but you can also use the screwdriver to take and put into this little hole when it's in there and then keep it from spinning and then you can back the, back the bolt out of the this little bit. Okay, so that's it. That's the essence of the idea. I guess the whole thing about this is, is just uh, use what you got, I guess. I didn't even think about doing that before. I never even saw that done, so I thought, well, what can I do with what I've got to make things happen? And it works. Sometimes even if you don't have the proper tool to do the job, you can make something happen with what you got and that's part of the creative process, which is really cool. So hopefully if you have to deburr some holes inside something, that might uh, help you out. This is, of course, it only works here in this particular case because I have a hole on the outside. I can go ahead and put that bolt through and spin that little bit. But hey, worked out great. Saved me 40 bucks for a new tool that I'm probably only going to use for this one application. And I can move on with my project. Keep on painting. Hope you guys do well. Thanks for watching.